Welcome back to the Grand Solar Minimum channel. Today is Wednesday, January 24th, 2018. Taking a look at our current conditions, our solar wind speed is sitting at 403.9 kilometers per second with a density of 15.7 protons. Taking a look at our sun, we have no sunspots to report on. This is four days consecutive now with zero sunspots, giving us a total of 11 days in 2018 without sunspots. Looking at our KP indices, we're sitting at a three and the 24 hour max is at three, so not quite storm levels. And looking at the SDO, it is reported that there are no large corona holes on the earth facing side of the sun. However, the corona does appear to be weak. And here's the TSI data for January 17th, 2018. The last reading came in at 1360.71. That is up from last reported of 1360.67. On Wednesday, January 31st, there's going to be a blue moon, the second full moon in the calendar month. People who go outside to look may see a different hue though, bright orange. This blue moon is going to be eclipsed, swallowed by a copper colored shadow of Earth for more than an hour. The eclipse will be visible from Asia, Australia, and most of North America. The bright orange color of the eclipse may be chalked up to volcanic activity or rather lag thereof. Atmospheric scientist Richard Keane from the University of Colorado explains. During a lunar eclipse, most of the light illuminating the moon passes through Earth's stratosphere where it is reddened by scattering. If the stratosphere is loaded with the dust from volcanic eruptions, the eclipse will be dark. The cataclysmic explosion of Tambora in 1850, for instance, turned the moon into a dark, starless hole in the sky during two subsequent eclipses. But Earth is experiencing a bit of a volcanic lull. We haven't had a major volcanic blast since 1991 when Mount Pinatubo awoke from a 500-year slumber and sprayed 10 billion cubic meters of ash, rock, and debris into Earth's atmosphere. Recent eruptions have been puny by comparison and have failed to make a dent on the stratosphere. This eclipse is going to be bright and beautiful. Keen studies lunar eclipses because of what they can tell us about the Earth's energy balance. A transparent stratosphere lets the sun shine in and actually helps warm the Earth below. The lunar eclipse record indicates a clear stratosphere has contributed about 0.2 degrees warming since the 1980s. Mount Pinatubo finished a 102 year episode of frequent major eruptions that began in 1883. Since then, lunar eclipses have been relatively bright and the January 31st eclipse shouldn't be no exception. In the USA, the best time to look is during the hours before sunrise. Western states are favored. The moon makes the first contact with the core of the Earth's shadow at 348 Pacific time, kicking off the partial eclipse. Total begins at 452 Pacific time as well. Maximum orange is expected to be around 5.30 a.m. Pacific time. Easternmost parts of the USA will miss totality altogether. And with more on updates with volcanoes, here's Mari. Thanks, Jake. Earthquakes and volcanoes in the Pacific Ring of Fire are active this week, and it's only Wednesday. Volcanoes are erupting, and the Earth is quaking in Indonesia, Japan, Alaska, and the Philippines. It's been quite an active week along the Ring of Fire, the geologically rambunctious region that follows the 25,000-mile perimeter of the Pacific Ocean and is home to 90% of the world's earthquakes. Mount Mayan, the most the most active volcano in the Philippines was busy spouting lava half a mile into the air Wednesday alongside volcanic gas and ash. More than 56,000 residents in the central province of Albay have fled their homes since the volcano began a slow eruption on January 13th. And volcanologists are worried that larger eruptions may still be on the way. The Philippine Institute of Volcanology and Seismology updated its threat level to four this week, meaning that a hazardous eruption is imminent. Once a major eruption starts, the threat level will be raised to five. Tuesday also saw the eruption of Mount Kasatsu Shrine, 100 miles northwest of Tokyo, which killed one soldier in an avalanche and injured a dozen at a ski resort. And further south, Indonesia's Mount Agung, which has been spewing ash since November, had four distinct eruptions. But wait, we haven't gotten to the earthquakes this week. A magnitude 
magnitude 6.1 earthquake rumbled 100 miles southwest of Jakarta, Indonesia on Tuesday. And across the ocean, a magnitude 7.9 earthquake struck Tuesday morning off the coast of Alaska. A tsunami warning was issued and subsequently canceled for the entire west coast of the U.S. Can all these events be related? The short answer is yes. Earthquakes and volcanoes can interact, said Emily Brodsky, a professor of Earth and Planetary Sciences at the University of California in Santa Cruz. But she noted it's too early to connect the dots between all the activity we've seen this week. It's hard to say how much an event has influenced one another. However, earthquakes and volcanic eruptions are often clustered, she said. A volcanic eruption can cause tremors, while a large trembler can rattle a magma chamber underneath a volcano, causing towers towers of ash and rivers of lava to gush forth. A volcano in Chile erupted in 1960, just 38 hours after a magnitude 9.6 earthquake, for example. This is because large tracts of Earth's crust called tectonic plates are constantly running into each other, sliding past each other, or rolling on top of each other. These movements can cause pressure to build up and dissipate in the form of earthquakes, or can create fissures that allow magma to reach the Earth's surface. For now, authorities in the Philippines are expanding the evacuation evacuation zone around the Mayan to five miles, warning locals that a major eruption could be imminent. Thanks for tuning in to the Grand Solar Minimum channel. Please like and share.